The global economy was humming along in early 2020. Then, the COVID-19 pandemic hit, bringing the world to a standstill. Businesses closed, consumer spending plummeted, and millions lost their jobs, leading to a swift and devastating economic impact. Central banks around the world coordinated their efforts to slash interest rates to near zero, aiming to create a more stable global financial system. This unified response was essential to prevent a domino effect of economic woes. Central banks slashed interest rates to near zero, making borrowing money incredibly cheap. This move aimed to stimulate spending and investment, essential drivers of economic growth. Individuals could access personal loans, credit card debt consolidation, and student loan refinancing at lower rates. This provided financial relief for those who lost jobs or faced reduced incomes. However, savers earned negligible returns on deposits, facing a difficult choice between diminished returns or riskier investments. The imbalance between borrowers and savers became a growing concern as the economy began to recover. The near zero interest rate policy also aimed to help businesses survive the pandemic's economic fallout. Lower borrowing costs allowed companies to cover expenses, retain employees, and invest in new opportunities. This was crucial for small and medium-sized enterprises operating on tight margins. However, some argued that businesses might use cheap credit for share buybacks rather than productive investments. The long-term impact of this policy on business investment required careful analysis. The housing market saw significant changes due to near zero interest rates. Homeowners refinanced mortgages at lower rates, reducing monthly payments and freeing up cash flow. Lower mortgage rates made home ownership more accessible to first-time buyers, fueling a surge in demand and home prices. This stimulated economic activity in construction and real estate, but raised concerns about affordability and a potential housing bubble. Policymakers faced the challenge of balancing economic stimulus with the risks of asset bubbles. Near zero interest rates and stimulus money led to inflation as demand outstripped supply. The COVID-19 pandemic disrupted global supply chains, creating delays and shortages. As demand surged, these supply constraints became more pronounced, leading to higher prices. Consumers faced rising prices for goods and services, while businesses passed on increased costs to consumers. Inflation became impossible to ignore as prices for everyday goods and services rose. Energy prices surged, driven by increased demand, supply chain disruptions, and geopolitical tensions. The rising cost of energy affected transportation and manufacturing, leading to higher consumer prices. Food prices also increased due to higher demand, adverse weather, and rising costs of fertilizers and transportation. Supply chain disruptions and increased demand led to price hikes for consumer goods. The rising cost of living became a growing concern for individuals and families. Inflation was a global phenomenon affecting countries worldwide. The interconnected global economy meant inflationary pressures in one country could spread to others. Central banks faced a delicate balancing act of raising interest rates without choking off economic growth. Emerging market economies faced additional vulnerabilities, such as high foreign currency denominated debt. The global inflationary surge had far-reaching consequences for economic and social stability. Rising prices fueled social unrest and political instability in some countries. Inflation returned with a vengeance, forcing central banks to reconsider their policies. The near zero interest rate environment had inadvertently fueled a surge in prices, the COVID-19 pandemic and massive fiscal and monetary stimulus created fertile ground for inflation. Initial signs of inflation were dismissed as temporary, but persistent price rises required a decisive policy response. Central banks faced the dilemma of raising interest rates without stifling economic growth. Central banks began a delicate balancing act to rein in rising prices without derailing the recovery. 
The Federal Reserve announced plans to gradually raise interest rates and reduce its holdings of government bonds. The European Central Bank also hinted at policy normalization. Higher borrowing costs could dampen consumer spending and business investment. Central banks needed to calibrate their response to balance controlling inflation and supporting growth. Finding the right pace of policy normalization became the paramount challenge. The shift towards tighter monetary policy was a global phenomenon. Central banks in emerging markets were among the first to raise interest rates due to acute inflationary pressures. The global tightening cycle raised concerns about a potential slowdown in global economic growth. Higher interest rates in developed economies could lead to financial instability in emerging markets. Coordinating monetary policy in a world of interconnected economies and divergent inflationary pressures tested central bankers' skills and resolve. As the global economy entered 2024, uncertainty hung in the air. Aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflation were slowing growth and raising fears of recession. Inflation remained above target, leaving central bankers with tough choices. The economic landscape was littered with mixed signals. The U.S. labor market remained strong, but consumer confidence waned. Inflation eroded purchasing power, and rising rates made borrowing expensive. The housing market cooled as mortgage rates surged. In Europe, the outlook was more precarious. The energy crisis and high inflation dampened consumer spending. The European Central Bank faced a challenging inflation outlook. The war in Ukraine disrupted supply chains and fueled inflation. The conflict exposed the fragility of the global economy. Amidst the uncertainty, one scenario offered a glimmer of hope, a soft landing. In this scenario, central banks, through a combination of skill and a bit of luck, would manage to tame inflation without triggering a recession. Economic growth would moderate but remain positive, inflation would gradually decline towards target levels, and interest rates would stabilize, albeit at a higher level than the ultra-low rates seen in the post-pandemic era. Several factors could contribute to a soft landing. First, inflation, while still elevated, had shown signs of peaking in some major economies. Supply chain disruptions, while persisting, were gradually easing, and commodity prices had retreated from their recent highs. If these trends continued, inflationary pressures could abate further, giving central banks more room to maneuver. Second, labor markets in many developed economies remained strong, with low unemployment and steady job growth. This robust labor market could continue to support consumer spending, even as inflation and rising interest rates took a bite out of household budgets. As long as people were employed and earning income, they would continue to spend, albeit more cautiously. Third, central banks, having learned from past mistakes, were proceeding cautiously, carefully monitoring economic data and communicating their intentions to the market. This forward guidance, while not foolproof, could help to anchor inflation expectations and prevent a wage price spiral where rising prices lead to demands for higher wages, which in turn push prices even higher. While a soft landing was certainly possible, the path ahead was fraught with risks and the potential for a more turbulent economic scenario remained all too real. Storm clouds were gathering on the horizon, threatening to derail the fragile recovery and plunge the global economy into a recession. One significant risk was the possibility of a wage price spiral. With labor markets tight and inflation eroding purchasing power, workers were understandably demanding higher wages. While some wage growth was to be expected, a rapid acceleration in wages could fuel a self-reinforcing cycle of inflation, forcing businesses to raise prices to cover their increased labor costs leading to further demands for higher wages and so on. Another risk was the potential for a policy error by central banks. Calibrating monetary policy in the face of high inflation and slowing growth was a delicate balancing act. Raising rates too aggressively could choke off economic growth and trigger a recession, while moving too slowly could allow inflation to become entrenched, requiring even more painful measures later on. As we move through 2024 and into 2025, Central banks around the world find themselves at a critical juncture. After years of near zero interest rates post-COVID, followed by a series of aggressive hikes to combat inflation, the question on everyone's mind is, what will central banks do next? As we discuss the future actions of central banks, 
it's impossible to ignore one of the most significant factors shaping global markets right now, the yen carry trade. This complex financial strategy has been a key player in the global economy, and its recent unwinding in August 2024 has sent shockwaves through markets worldwide. To understand its impact, let's first break down the yen carry trade. Essentially, it involves borrowing Japanese yen at Japan's ultra-low interest rates and then converting that yen into other currencies to invest in higher-yielding assets, such as U.S. Treasury bonds or emerging market equities. Investors have been drawn to this strategy for years, given Japan's persistent near-zero interest rates. However, in August 2024, the Bank of Japan made a pivotal move by slightly raising interest rates. Although the increase was just 15 basis points, it was enough to change the game for the yen carry trade. The yen began to appreciate, meaning those who had borrowed yen to invest abroad now faced increased costs when converting back to yen to repay their loans. This sudden appreciation of the yen triggered a massive unwinding of the carry trade. Investors caught off guard, rushed to sell off their foreign investments, leading to a sharp decline in global stock markets. The technology sector, emerging markets, and other high-risk assets, which had been popular targets for these investments, were particularly hard hit. The result was a wave of volatility that echoed across the financial world. The yen carry trade's unwinding has put additional pressure on central banks, particularly in the West. As investors scramble to adjust their portfolios, central banks must now weigh the risks of further rate hikes against the potential for renewed market instability. This situation adds another layer of complexity to their already difficult task of balancing inflation control with economic growth. In response, central banks might be forced to rethink their strategies. For instance, the Federal Reserve could consider pausing its rate hikes to prevent further financial market disruption. Alternatively, the European Central Bank might proceed more cautiously with its monetary tightening to avoid exacerbating the situation in already fragile markets. So, what's next? The yen carry trade has shown just how interconnected our global financial system is. If central banks push too hard on interest rates, they risk triggering more unwinding of similar trades, leading to further market turmoil. On the other hand, if they ease off too soon, Inflation could resurge, creating new challenges for economic stability. The most likely scenario, a measured approach. Central banks may opt for small, gradual rate adjustments, carefully monitoring market reactions to avoid triggering another wave of instability. As the yen carry trade has taught us, even small shifts in policy can have far-reaching consequences, making the next steps taken by central banks some of the most crucial in recent history. As we navigate this uncertain financial landscape, the lessons from the yen carry trade will be pivotal in shaping the future actions of central banks. The road ahead will require careful balancing as the world's economies adapt to new realities in the post-COVID era. As we head into 2025, central banks are at a crossroads. With inflation showing signs of cooling and economic growth slowing, some central banks may consider pausing or even reversing their rate hikes. Here's how different scenarios might play out. Scenario one, gradual rate cuts. If inflation continues to fall and economic growth remains sluggish, central banks might opt for gradual rate cuts. This approach would aim to ease the burden on consumers and businesses without reigniting inflation. For example, the Federal Reserve might lower rates by 25 to 50 basis points in the first half of 2025 if inflation targets are met and unemployment rises. Scenario two, holding steady. Another possible scenario is that central banks could hold rates steady, keeping them elevated to ensure inflation is fully under control before making any moves. This approach would be more cautious, allowing central banks to monitor the effects of previous rate hikes. The European Central Bank, known for its conservative approach, might follow this path, especially if energy prices remain volatile. Scenario three, emergency rate cuts. In the event of an economic shock, such as a geopolitical crisis, a financial market crash, or a sudden downturn in global demand, central banks may need to cut rates more aggressively. Emerging markets, which are more vulnerable to global economic shocks, might lead the way in this scenario, with central banks in countries like Brazil or Turkey slashing rates to stimulate growth. So which scenario is most likely? As of now, a gradual approach seems to be the consensus among most economists. The Federal Reserve, for instance, might start with small rate cuts in the second half of 2024, closely monitoring the effects on inflation and growth. The Bank of England could follow a similar path, 
while the European Central Bank may take longer to adjust given the region's complex economic landscape. Whatever path central banks choose, the stakes are high. The balance between taming inflation and supporting economic growth is delicate, and the decisions made in the next few months will shape the global economic landscape for years to come. As we look ahead, one thing is clear, central banks will need to navigate this new economic environment with precision, adapting their policies to the evolving challenges of our interconnected world.